Welcome back. Time to celebrate success as you continue your journey beyond this course. This set of videos will cover our final financial statement and use everything that you've learned so far about how transactions and accounts interrelate. As we've discussed previously, please review these learning objectives as you progress through the chapter to ensure you're on track. You will also find them in your chapter checklist. The statement of cash flows, the fourth that we've learned about, is my favorite financial statement because it tells us where a company gets its cash and how it spends its cash and whether total cash has increased or decreased during the period. It is also the go-to financial statement for lenders and investors for the same reason. Remember, net income is not the same as cash. Under GAAP, specifically the revenue recognition and matching principles, the timing of cash flow is not so important. However, in reality, cash is king. Without cash, a company won't continue for very long because it won't be able to pay its bills. The statement of cash flows makes it easy for us to see if a company has positive cash flow from operations, a good thing, whether it has money to invest in long-term assets to grow the company, and finally, whether it is borrowing and repaying its long-term lenders. Let's look at these points in a bit more detail. While it is important for users to know how much cash a company has, it is also important to know how a company will fund its operations. The statement of cash flows answers questions that cannot be easily answered by looking at the income statement or the balance sheet. Did the company have to borrow money? or sell stock to help pay the operating expenses of the company? If so, users need to be aware of this so they can fully assess the cash flow position of the company. Cash flow information is also useful to determine if the business has sufficient cash to pay its debts or if the business paid dividends during the period. Because it looks at all the financial activities of a company, the statement is a val valuable analytical tool for investors, creditors, and managers, the last two for external financial reporting and for forecasting cash needs. Now, cash reported on the balance sheet includes currency and cash equivalents. Recall from a previous chapter that cash equivalents are short-term, highly liquid investments that are easily converted into cash and that have very little risk of loss. An example of a cash equivalent would be a short-term treasury bill that is government-issued, is very close to maturity, and has very little risk associated with it. All cash receipts and cash payments are classified and reported on the statement in one of three categories, operating, investing, or financing activities. I recommend remembering these three categories by remembering the lovely little acronym OIF. There are a few sayings that you can use to remember this phrase. Oh, I forgot, or old icky feet might help. O-I-F, o OIF. Individual cash receipts and payments for each of these three categories are labeled to identify their originating transactions and events. A net cash inflow, a source, incurs when the occurs when the receipts in a category exceed the payments. In a net cash outflow, a use occurs when the payments in a category exceed the receipts. Now operating activities include those transactions and events that determine net income. You might think about operating activities as every transaction a company has with its customers, its suppliers, and its employees. Examples are the production and purchase of inventory, the sale of goods and services to customers, and the payments made to operate the business. Notice that operating activities are organized into cash inflows and cash outflows. Operating cash inflows include cash received from customers. It also includes cash received as dividends and interest. Operating cash outflows include cash payments for salaries, supplies, inventory, taxes, and interest. Investing activities generally include those transactions and events that affect 
long-term assets, namely the purchase and sale of long-term assets such as property and equipment, lending and collecting principal amounts of notes receivable, and making long-term investments in securities or in the stock of another company. Note that because interest revenue is already reported on the income statement, it is classified as an operating activity. Financing activities, then, include those transactions and events that affect long-term liabilities and equity. These activities involve transactions with a company's owners and creditors. They also involve borrowing and repaying principal amounts related to both short-term and long-term debt. Examples are, one, obtaining cash from issuing debt and repaying the amounts borrowed, and two, receiving cash from or distributing cash to owners, including the issuance of stock and payment of dividends. Because interest is reported on the income statement, it is treated as an operating activity and not a financing activity, interest expense that is. Some important investing and financing activities do not affect cash receipts or payments. One example of such a transaction is the purchase of long-term assets using a long-term note payable, a loan. This transaction involves both investing and financing activities, but does not involve a single dollar of cash, so it is not reported in any of the three sections of the Statement of Cash Flows. Such transactions are reported at the bottom of the Statement of Cash Flows or in a separate note or schedule to the statement because of their importance and the full disclosure principle. This slide lists transactions commonly disclosed as non-cash investing and financing activities. This concludes the initial video for the Statement of Cash Flows.